Hello again, I'm Dr. Marge and we will continue with the fourth step in tooth preparation, convenience form. It refers to the extension of the preparation so that it may be most conveniently seen, approached, and restored. It is a term meaning to gain access. Minsan, gusto mo sobrang liit, sobrang ideal ng iyong outline form. Tapos hindi naman magkasya yung iyong hand-cutting instrument. E meron pang carry sa loob. So, convenience form is important for you to gain access into the cavity. So, how do you achieve convenience form? The width of the isthmus isthmus should be one-third to one-fourth of the intercuspal distance. A while ago, we mentioned about proper width of the cavity of the outline for your resistance form. But for your convenience form, the width of the isthmus should be around one-third to one-fourth of the intercuspal distance for you to gain access into the cavity. Next, when you do convenience form, you make sure your hand cutting instruments are, are around only one millimeter in width. Okay, so technically, we check convenience form if you have sufficient width of the cavity. Sufficient, sakto, tama. Okay. And then number five is removal of remaining decay. The removal of the previous steps will usually result to removal of most decay. However, the primary purpose of this step is to remove any remaining decay. This may be done by the use of sharp spoon excavator or slowly rotating large round burr. Again, sharp spoon excavator or slowly rotating large round burr. So with this, step number five, removal of remaining decay. If, for example, your preparation is... Like this, bakal and lingual walls converging towards occlusal. Tapos may carries pa dito. Then you just excavate. Do not lower down the pulpal floor. You just excavate the remaining decay. And then this area will be filled with will be filled with your medicament. Either GI, zinc oxide eugenol. Ganun, depending on the remaining dentine thickness. Again. If the caries is just here, you just excavate. You do not lower the entire pulpal floor. Next. Next is finishing of enamel margins and walls. When you finish the enamel margins and walls, it involves removal of unsupported enamel rods or the shaping of the enamel walls in such a way that they are smooth and in line with the direction of the enamel rods. So, pag meron pang thin, enamel rods on that area, then you have to remove. Okay. Because if you don't remove, sometimes you want to preserve. Hey, Doc, let's preserve the enamel wall. Meron pa naman. But there is caries in the dentine. But I want to preserve the wall. But you see, you will post uh, more damage to the tooth during mastication. It will fracture during mastication and you don't want that. And the patient will come back to you and say, Doc, yung pinastahan natin, nabasag. Thus, you will answer, ay hindi naman yung pasay nabasag, yung ngipin mo. And then you're proud that it's not the restoration. But actually, you you had your fault there because you did not remove unsupported enamel in your preparation and next enamel walls are plain to smoothness and consist of full-length dentine supported enamel rods all dentine 
uh, all enamel should be supported by sound and clean. That's our rule in doing tooth preparation. Okay, that's for number six. And then, uh, how do you use how do you do finishing enamel margins and walls? You use your hand cutting instruments. Pwede na yun. And number seven is toilet or cleansing of the cavity. Removal of all debris from the prepared cavity. How do you remove the debris? You may remove with air or water syringe. But uh, I do not like using air because you have open dentinal tubules. If you air blast the dentinal tubules, then you, it will cause post-operative sensitivity. Sabihin, Dok, yung pinasta natin, nangingilo pa rin. Ay, wala na yan. Ha? Pinakita ko sa'yo, wala nang itim-itim yan. But maybe in the technique, you air blasted the dentinal tubules. That's why uh, the dentinal tubules were dehydrated. Tapos nagkaroon ng post-operative sensitivity. Nangingilo. Okay. So how do you clean? You just clean with uh, cotton pellet with water. Cotton pellet with hydrogen peroxide. You, can, you may use that. Uh, cotton pellet with povidone iodine solution. Uh, cotton pellet with chlorhexidine. Okay, so chlorhexidine, povidone iodine, or hydrogen peroxide. Dry and isolate the cavity. When you dry, do not air, air blast the cavity. And if you need medication, you, you need the calcium hydroxide, you need GI or zinc oxide eugenol. You place a medication, then you dry, then place a the necessary restorative material, whether amalgam, GI, composite resin, or temporary filling material. Your temporary filling material for vital teeth will be zinc oxide eugenol. So, pag sinabik, for example, you are already in your clinic, and then you, you work very slow. Sabi ng CI, oh, eh, TF mo na yan. TF is temporary filling. So, what will you use? Are you going to use GI? Are you going to use amalgam, composite? You're supposed to use zinc oxide eugenol. Okay? So, as a review, number one, you have outline form. Number two, you have resistance form. Number three, retention form. Number four, convenience form. Number five, removal of remaining decay. Number six, finishing of enamel margins and walls. And number seven, cleansing of the cavity. Now, this is for conventional cavity design. Now, my question is, if you will be using conventional cavity design and you will be using amalgam as your restorative material, and I will be your CI, I will ask you, okay, Mr. Clinician, you are going to do amalgam restoration. What are you going to do first? Are you going to do outline form first? Or are you going to remove caries first? And you will be startled. And I will ask you again. You will be doing amalgam restoration using conventional cavity design. What are you going to do first? Outline form or removal of caries? Type your answers in the comment section of this video. And as a supplementary lesson, let me just add. Let me just add enameloplasty. Enameloplasty is eliminating the developmental faults by removing it with the side of a flame-shaped diamond stone, leaving a smooth surface. So sometimes may mga abnormality, abnormal grooves on the facial surface of the anterior or posterior tooth. Then you can just use a flame-shaped burr to remove the pit. So how, how deep can you remove? Okay, dapat until one-third lang of the enamel thickness. Hindi pwedeng malalim. Nandun na ka... Nandun ka na sa dentin. So, when you do enameloplasty, you're just removing part of the abnormal enamel that will not make the tooth sensitive. No more than one-third of the enamel thickness should be removed. 
pag more than one third, ay mangingilo na. Or you have to do restoration. So, in this case, malalim naman yung pit, yung fissure. So, hindi ma-reach ng toothbrush during toothbrushing. So, para mas madaling malinis, you just remove a little bit para it will not become area for plaque retention. Okay. So, that is enameloplasty. So, you do not tell your patient. Ay, drill lang natin yan. Okay na yan. No. What you're doing is enameloplasty. And it's a procedure that only a dentist can do. Oh. So, you have to learn how to explain the procedures to your patients. So, you are paid accordingly. Next, amalgam. Supplementary lesson lang. Indications for amalgam, moderate to large restoration. If you have very small restoration, you don't use amalgam because amalgam is stronger when you place it in bulk. Restorations that are not in highly aesthetic areas of the mouth. When the patient smiles, uh, the amalgam should not be seen. Restorations that have heavy occlusal contacts. Restorations that cannot be well isolated. So, amalgam is moisture tolerant. Moisture tolerant, ha? Hindi naman ibig sabihin na kababad sa laway while you're working on it. May unting moisture, okay pa rin si amalgam mag-set. Restorations that extend onto the root surface. Pag root surface carries, indicated ang amalgam. Foundations for your jacket crowns. Abutment teeth for removable partial denture. Temporary or caries control restoration. So, you don't know whether the patient would decide for for RCT ba or extraction. And you can use amalgam because amalgam is actually relatively cheaper. And amalgam contraindications. When not to use amalgam? Aesthetically prominent areas of posterior teeth. If the patient smiles molar to molar and the buccal areas can be seen, then do not use amalgam. Small to moderate class 1 and 2 restorations that cannot that can be well isolated. So, pag small to moderate, pwede naman ma-isolate, di naman prone to moisture, then don't use amalgam. Small class 6 restorations, don't use amalgam. Amalgam is still good to use. The advantages, it's still easy to use. High tensile strength. Excellent wear resistance. Favorable long-term clinical research results. Have you heard of your Lola and your Lolo telling, telling you, ay, itong pasta ko, nung araw pa to. Yan. Hanggang ngayon, maayos pa. Lower cost than for composite restorations and simplicity of the procedure. Disadvantage of amalgam, non-aesthetic. Of course, when you look at the tooth, kita yung amalgam. Less conservative because you need to remove uh, more tooth structure during tooth preparation. Even if your caries is just in the enamel, you still have to prepare the cavity 0.5 to 1 millimeter into the dentine. Number three, weakens tooth structure. Does not weaken in a sense that it destroys the tooth structure, but amalgam does not support uh, tooth structure. So, when you do conventional cavity design, the, the tooth can stand on its own. Okay. And number four, initial marginal leakage. And number five, more complex tooth preparations. Why more complex? Because you have to follow outline form, resistance form, retention forms, all of these that we study based on the anatomy, morphology, and histology of the tooth. So we are now ready for the steps in tooth preparation. Thank you for watching and I hope you learned something today.